but in today we will um, we'll finish the section we were in um, yesterday. So the section we were in yesterday is primarily about the ratio test, but that's not its title. Its title is something like the ratio and the root tests. So, this uh, suggests that we have something left to cover, um, to wit, the root test. And the root test and the ratio test are grouped together because they're very similar. If you take a limit of an absolute value, and you look at whether it's less than one or greater than one or equal to one. And that gives you the convergence of the series. The root test is the limit of the nth root of A sub N in absolute value, and it's interpreted in exactly the same way as the ratio. Then one converges, greater than one diverges, equals one, the test fails. Good morning, everyone. And we get no info. So let's pause a moment to consider this. I said that the ratio test was so important. And it might seem from my tone that I'm being a little dismissive of the root test by comparison. Um, there are situations where the root test is going to just clearly be the best test to you. So I don't want to give the impression that the root test is worthless. But the root test does have one glaring issue that the ratio test doesn't have. And that glaring issue is that in almost every situation, this limit is going to be difficult to take. Um, and that sort of, that's where things kind of fall apart with the root test, or that's where things can fall apart with the root test. But again, I don't want to I don't want to be, oh, what's the word, belligerent? That's not quite it, but I'll take it. I don't want to be belligerent about this. There are situations where the root test is going to work really well. In particular, the root test is sometimes a good test to use if you've got um, if you've got powers, because taking the nth root undoes the nth power. So a classic example of the root test would be something like this. N to the N over three to the N. And maybe we'll make it a little more complicated than this. 
n to the n over three to the power of n plus two. It's um, probably not clear just to looking at this what the um what the play should be. Like we could maybe try, we could maybe try the term test. It's it seems likely to me that if we could find the limit of this thing, we'd find that it is into zero. So that we get divergence automatically. Um, but, but taking the limit of this isn't obvious. In particular, taking the limit of n to the n isn't obvious. I mean, well, taking the limit is obvious. I shouldn't say obvious, sorry. It's a verbal tick. I'm trying to work on it. Taking the limit as n goes to infinity of n to the n. Well, if you've got infinity and you raise it to infinity, presumably that limit is infinity. The issue comes with this fraction. Um, this is indeterminate. It's infinity over infinity. And Lopatow's rule isn't going to work well here because to use Lopatow's rule, we need to know how to take the derivative of n to the n. We never learned how to take the derivative where the variable appears both in a base and a power simultaneously. So the nth term test is tricky. It's hard to um hard to take this limit. The integral test, certainly not. We definitely don't know how to integrate n to the n. Um, it's not geometric. Um, the comparison test. I mean, I don't know what we'd compare it to. The limit comparison test, likewise. The ratio test, maybe, but a situation like this, where we have these powers of n is really where the, the root test can be useful. Because if we try the root test, Uh, I write it, I mean, it's called the root test. Remember that the nth root is the one over n power. And I'm not forgetting the absolute values, but everything here is positive. So the absolute values don't do anything. And now we have to have our algebra has to be on a point here. The power of a fraction is the fraction of the powers. So this is the top to the one over n divided by the bottom. To the one over n. And again, our algebra has to be on a point here. We have to remember that if we have repeated powers, that's the same as multiplying those powers together. And n times one over n is one. So we get this great simplification up in the top. The n to the n turns to n to the first. 
And then raising to the first power doesn't do anything. So we don't have to write it. The bottom is more intricate. That's, um, does everyone have this written down? Let's advance to a new frame. Well, I'll, I'll copy this on the next frame anyway. The limit as n goes to infinity of n over three to the n plus two raised to the power of one over n. Um, I said the denominator was intricate, or I said it was more intricate. I don't want to overstate things. It can be, you can sometimes make problems seem more intimidating than they are. We've got repeated powers in the denominator. So we should multiply those powers together. And multiplication distributes over addition. So one over n times n is one plus two over n. And now we can take this limit. And again, I, I see stuff like this. I think it can look pretty intimidating. Um, you need to just take this sort of piece by piece and not let yourself be intimidated. As n goes to infinity, two divided by n goes to zero. So the denominator is going to three. And infinity over three is infinity. And properly speaking, of course, this is not a limit. The limit doesn't exist, but this works in the intuitive way. Infinity is greater than one. The root test says that if the limit is greater than one, the series diverges. So this series diverges. Again, we just think of infinity as a number essentially that's greater than one. And that um, example is like this. In my opinion, are the purview of the root test. A lot of stuff you can do with the root test you could also do with the ratio test. And, and that's not really true of vice versa. A lot of stuff that we can do with the ratio test, we can't do with the root test. The, the great power of the root test is situations just like this, where we've got our N, both in a base and a power, because we'd have no idea how to deal with that situation in general. And the root test allows us to try to get out of it and get back into a situation that we can deal with, like, like that fraction there. So another example, in fact, why don't, 
finally, we have a little time. Why don't you do an example for me? This let's take five n minus three n cubed over seven n cubed plus two. The entire thing raised to the nth power. Why don't you, and there might be other ways to do this, but why don't you hit this thing with the root test and see if you can um, get this figured out that way. Let me uh, pause the recording so we don't have like five minutes of silence. Oh, again, this is what I think of as a, a sort of classic example for the root test, because we've got this, I mean, we've got this nth power and taking the nth root, we'll just get rid of it and leave us with a rational function that we should then be able to deal with. So the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of an nth power, well, the root and the power eliminate each other and we're left with the limit of a rational function and uh, let's put the absolute values in. I didn't bother with them here just because everything was positive. The absolute values might not be doing anything. I mean, they definitely aren't. Here, it's not obvious that everything is positive. And in fact, stuff isn't positive. What's happening as n goes to infinity, and this is Lopatow's rule. Now, but it's negative three sevenths. So the absolute values are doing something here. They're necessary. That limit is positive three sevenths. And I, I say that as if we finished the problem, um, but we need to interpret that. Three sevenths is less than one. Going here, if we are less than one, this thing converges. So this is a convergent series. Okay, so now we've given the root test its due. We've given examples where this thing definitely works. Um, what if we have like two to the n over n factorial? Let's try to hit this with the root test and see if it's easier than the ratio test. 
Because to me, this screams ratio test. We've got exponentials, we've got factorials, both of those work really well with the ratio test. But we've also got an nth power. And we might suspect or we might think that this is going to work well with the root test because the nth root will get rid of the nth power. And that's true up to a point. If we try the root test here, two to the n is positive, n factorial is positive, I'm not forgetting the factorial. Let me, let me at least write the factorial down for the first step, just so it's in your notes. Okay, so we factorial, absolute value is what I was trying to say there. Um, so we've got the absolute values. Now we can recognize well, everything is positive, so we can get rid of the absolute values. And we reach this point here, the limit as n goes to infinity of two divided by n factorial to the one over n power. And the problem is that we do not know, we've never learned how to take this limit. And what is it that makes this limit difficult? Well, in general, if we've got stuff to the power of zero, that's one. Anything to the zeroth power is one. On the other hand, a large number, um, let me see. On the other hand, infinity raised to a power ought to be infinity. Infinity raised to a positive power ought to be infinity. Like infinity to the one half, the square root of infinity, that should be infinity. So in this limit, we have these intuitions and they're fighting one another. The factorial, the n factorial is going to infinity, but the one over n is going to zero. So we have this competing intuition that maybe this limit should be one, but also this limit should be infinity, and we don't know what to do with that algebraically. Now, granted, in, in this age of technology, we might be able to figure this out. We might be able to just go to Desmos and take a look at this thing. But um, at least algebraically, and at least intuitively, I don't know how to take this limit. And this is something that happens a lot. With, with the root test. And it's why the root test will almost always be more specialized than the ratio test. Because we get limits like this, and then we don't know how to take them. So, um, so when I said way back here, you know, the fly in the ointment or the elephant in the room. 
was that taking these limits can be difficult. So using the root test can be difficult. It was examples like this that I had in mind. If, on the other hand, we hit this with the ratio test, rather than torturously erase everything, let's, uh, let's go to a new frame. The, the ratio test works beautifully here. We can take this limit. And I mean, we have to do the algebra. We have to rewrite it. But assuming that our cancellation game is on point, two to the n plus one over two to the n is two. N factorial over n plus one factorial is n plus one. As we go to infinity, this goes to zero and two times zero is zero. So the ratio test tells us that this series converges without any fuss. And that's the root test. And that makes this quite a short lesson, but that's okay. We've used basically all our time uh, in basically every other lesson. The, the college won't collapse if we let out a little early one day. I'll see you all um, bright and early Thursday morning, though, and we'll... Um, We'll do the next section. The next section is alternating series. We'll be able to do that in a single day.